Colombian Juan Manuel Gutierrez was an economist working in government jobs when he decided to enter the flower business. Got in love with it from the first uh, moment because of uh, um, all the excitement that it has in the production process, uh, the complexity of the logistics and um, uh, sex appeal that uh, the international markets have as an exporting business. His company, Wadu Flowers, SAS, started with just a quarter of a hectare and now has 27 hectares of land producing roses, which are exported to more than 20 different countries. We as a country have a lot of uh, strengths in this, particularly in this business, um, climate-wise, um, the temperature, the altitude, and, and having uh, with all that, the possibility of uh, delivering a very consistent, quality-wise product. Uh, so I think that um, we have the possibility to have a year-round production because of the stability of the, of the, of the climate. Um, and that allows us to have a very competitive, uh, solid position in the markets where we are. Colombia is Latin America's fourth largest economy. The country is best known for the quality of its coffee, but despite being its main agricultural export product, it makes up only 7% of its total trades. Oil and coal topped it with more than half of the country's exports. Economist Julian David Rosera says a boom in commodity prices is exactly what helped Colombia's economy in the early 2000s. During that time, Colombia ranked high in worldwide competitive indexes compared to its Latin American counterparts. Un incremento en los precios del petróleo, una mejor, digamos, una apreciación de la divisa, una apreciación de precio colombiano con respecto a la divisa. También había, digamos, un boom por invertir en América Latina. Había también un boom por recibir exportaciones y por intercambios con América Latina. Si en ese momento se celebraron, digamos, muchos traslados comerciales alrededor de toda América. Colombia signed many free trade agreements during the last two decades. Saúl Pineda, director of the Center of Competitiveness at the Rosario University, believes free trade agreements are a good opportunity for Colombia's non-mining sectors to enter international markets. But studies conducted by his university show the industries haven't been able to take full advantage of it. In the period 2006-2016, we have crystallized en algún momento de esos años, estos 15 tratados de libre comercio, el crecimiento promedio anual de las exportaciones mineroenergéticas, no mineroenergéticas, que son las que aprovechan estos TLCs, apenas ha sido del 1.1% anual promedio. Ahí es donde yo señalo que es un poco decepcionante eh, el, el ejercicio de aprovechamiento de los tratados. Pineda says being competitive means thinking long term and taking the next step in business. El país está en la obligación de mejorar su productividad, de mejorar su entorno competitivo, sus vías, sus puertos, la capacitación de su mano de obra y las empresas desde luego eh, diferenciar mejor sus productos, entender eh, que hay una oportunidad de mejorar la rentabilidad eh, en la medida en que no se exporten excedentes, sino que se haga eh, una eh, labor permanente para fortalecer la estrategia exportadora. One of the Colombian industries that has been hit the hardest by a globalized market has been the textile industry. In 2016, Colombian textiles reported the loss of 60,000 jobs in just six months, with $1.6 billion worth in accumulated losses. Textile producers claim cheaper imports are swarming the market. But Colombian clothing manufacturer Michelina is reporting a different story. Operating for the past 40 years, they have seen an increase in sales to Spain and Germany thanks to the free trade agreement between Colombia and the European Union. Teníamos muchas más limitaciones, era más complicado competir en el mercado porque habían esas trabas arancelarias. Eh, últimamente ha sido pues mucho más fácil Fuera de, del precio se ha facilitado muchísimo más toda la operación internacional. 
Michelina recommends other Colombian companies should offer products with added value that sets them apart. The company says 60 percent of its 230 employees are vulnerable women and girls who have been victims of the country's armed conflict. Hemos hecho todo un proceso para certificarnos en comercio justo. Es la única empresa textil confección en Colombia que lo tiene. Eso le ha abierto puertas a Páramo ya en Alemania. Ya en Alemania le compran solo por el hecho de que le ponemos la etiqueta adicional de comercio justo. Colombia's rice industry has also been working to remain competitive with the lowering of rice tariffs. In 2012, the U.S. and Colombia signed a free trade agreement. Rafael Hernández, general manager of Colombia's Rice Federation, says this meant Colombia had to work on remaining competitive against the U.S., a strong rice exporter that provides subsidies for its rice farmers. Venimos trabajando ya desde hace cinco años en el AMTEC, que es un programa que se llama Adopción Masiva de Tecnología, con el cual estamos mejorando de una forma sustancial la competitividad de los arroceros colombianos y la meta es producir una tonelada de arroz eh, paddy por debajo de 300 dólares, que con eso seríamos competitivos no solamente con el mercado de Estados Unidos, sino con la mayoría de los países del mundo. Colombia is the second largest consumer of rice in Latin America, and the country's production just barely meets its consumption needs. Blanca Ruth Perdomo has been a rice farmer for almost half a century. With technology adoption, Perdomo is trying to lower costs and increase production. Lo que nosotros aspiramos, sí, que Colombia exporte arroz. Y ya con la tecnología que nos tienen uh, bastante avanzados, sí, la Federación se ha preocupado mucho por eso. Entonces aspiramos a que algún día, no muy lejano, se pueda exportar. In the World Economic Forum's competitiveness report of 2014, Colombia shined. It climbed three positions, and economists said it was due to technological adoption and infrastructure projects. But the WEF also warned that the South American nation was depending too much on its mineral resources to boost its economy, making it vulnerable to the fall of commodity prices. Que se extraen los recursos se exportan o, se, o está a cargo de, de enclaves como tal. Sí, enclaves que eventualmente, a pesar que pareciese que en la teoría generaran ciertas sinergias en la zona en donde están, pues realmente, digamos, en, desde una perspectiva social y desde una perspectiva, por así decirlo, real, no lo hace. O sea, un ejemplo de estos podemos que nosotros tenemos en la Guajira el Cerrejón, que es la mina de carbón de cielo abierto más grande del mundo, pero la Guajira es el uno de los departamentos más pobres de Colombia y es el único en donde, la, donde hay niños que mueren de inanición. Another top issue that affects a country's global competitiveness ranking is corruption. And in the WEF's 2017 to 2018 report, Colombia dropped five places to number 66. According to the study, government performance is low due to corruption and government inadequacies. Podríamos estar hablando de una pérdida de 50 billones de pesos en solo corrupción. Y eso es un desfinanciamiento directo del Estado. ¿Y qué es lo que, qué, qué es lo que a dónde recurre el Estado para volver a refinanciar todo eso que se está perdiendo? A través de reformas tributarias completamente regresivas. ¿Qué significa que sean regresivas? Que atentan contra el bolsillo de la gente. This 2018, Colombia's leadership changed, and now at the head of the country is President Ivan Duque, a 42-year-old lawyer who has promised to diversify the economy. He speaks of supporting the country's orange economy, a reference to the cultural and creative industries. During a November 2018 presentation on the nation's competitiveness report, the president applauded the country's economic growth, despite challenges like the 50-year-old armed conflict but called on policy changes to increase foreign investment. Pero es una historia que a mi modo de ver nos obliga a nosotros a tenernos que sacudir. Porque si seguimos como usted lo plantea con crecimientos mediocres, crecimientos por debajo del 3%, nos vamos a encontrar con dos realidades. Una, que vamos a demorarnos más en ser un país de ingreso alto. 
y al mismo tiempo al no poder tener más inversión para hacer las transformaciones en digitalización y mejora del capital humano, muy seguramente vamos a estar afectándonos estructuralmente en la competitividad. While Colombia implements the changes needed to help strengthen its agricultural and industrial sectors, Colombian businessmen try to adapt. In the flower industry, Juan Manuel Gutierrez's immediate competition is neighboring Ecuador, the world's third largest exporter of cut flowers. The way to be very competitive and to main, maintain the competitiveness with Ecuador is to be very efficient, to start looking for new opportunities to uh, incorporate technology in the process, not only in the production process, but in the, also in the post-harvest uh, process, and uh, also in the commercial sales department, uh, because uh, today we need to evolve into the digital world and uh, to have uh, all the process uh, online. In April of 2018, the International Monetary Fund said Colombia is at a turning point in its economy. Improving infrastructure and reducing barriers to international trade were listed as urgent needs. How fast the country is able to address these needs will guarantee Colombia's success in the future.